The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? New start, press any key. Where's the any key? Welcome, you've got mail. <laughs> well, I must have not been paying attention when you were just talking to me. Do you think that you could read all righty? So, I've instructed the candidates because there wasn't enough fighting going on, and, and <laughs> I, we have Joyce Campagnone up here. I told them if they don't, if they don't start mixing it up, I'm going to bring her up here. Because we need the ratings that we got on the Central District debate. She was phenomenal. Thank you, Joyce, for being here, by the way. We have a great studio audience, by the way. I want to thank you guys for coming, all of you studio audience. My name's Tom Duggan. This is part two of the Methuen mayoral debate. Hi, at Top Two Guys Smoke Shop here at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. I want to thank Dave Garofalo for uh, giving us the opportunity to do a show after I quit radio. I quit radio. I swear I would never go back to radio. I said I will never do it, not as a guest, not as a host. I hated radio. I was just done with it. And he actually convinced me to do this. He said it's better than radio because it's video, it's audio, it's podcast. And so I want to thank him for talking me into it because I think it's worked out pretty well. Um, the candidates today, this is part two, by the way, if you're watching at home. Part one will be posted on uh, all of our Facebook pages, my personal page, the Valley Patriot page, and Methuen Sound Off. Um, and if you have any other pages that you want to share it to, let me know and I'll try and share that. Uh, to my left, Don Riccio, Neil Perry, uh, Jen Canan, and Dan Shabilia. They're all running for mayor. The election, the primary election, is September 17th. And the primary election is just as important as the final election because you don't want somebody good to get knocked off because you didn't vote. The person you were thinking of voting for in November doesn't make it. It's your fault if you don't vote in the, in the November, in the September primary. Um, we talked a lot in the first hour about the police contract. We touched on the Judy Scandal school department stuff. Um, and we ended up with the, uh, with the, uh, the Clean River Project. Um, before we get into anything really heavy, Lance, Ma Lance Massio... Uh, the dog, you see his picture on the screen every once in a while because he's a sponsor, uh, showed up at my office and he said woof woof a bunch of times. And when I translated, my dog translated Freddie, um, he said that uh, he wanted to know if all of the candidates sitting here would commit to trying to get a dog park for Methuen because there's no place for dogs in Methuen. Anybody? Oh, sure. I'm go on ahead. board with that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'd be on board with that, even though I don't own the dog. I have a dog. I'm all for it. Excellent. That, that was the easiest question we did. <laughs> Thanks for coming, kids. Good night. No, that was great. Um, so uh, Methuen, Methuen has, uh, as I drive through the city of Methuen, I've noticed these monstrosities going up, this overdevelopment of residential buildings going up. And it's happening in my hometown of North Andover, too, and it makes me worried about the infrastructure of the cities and the towns five, ten years out. Can you guys talk about what you think about the development, the residential development, maybe business development of North End uh, of Methuen, and if you become mayor, how will you handle the development, possibly overdevelopment, whatever your opinion is of this, uh, and what you think of it? Whoever wants to go first, anybody? So before you have people over for a holiday, you clean up the house. Before we keep inviting people in, I think we need to clean up the house. We, we Like you said, we have failing infrastructure. We have parts of the city where our pipes are basically wooden. We, we're, we're not, we don't have the structure to keep forcing houses down Howe Street. It could already take you a 45 minutes to get down Howe Street to get out to Pleasant Valley. Get off 213. I right. mean, try backing out of my driveway onto Lowell mm -hmm. Street, mm -hmm. especially right now where the lights at five corners are an absolute disaster. We, we can't keep building. There's nothing wrong with green space. We need to keep it that way. We do need to focus on our economic development, though. With this Tuscan compound going in up the street and now the Riverwalk going in in Lawrence, there's zero reason for anybody to come to Methuen. I mean, soup, salad, and breadsticks at Olive Garden is always a good thing, but, I mean, nobody's coming here special for that anymore. Well, they come in for butter bangs. Well, right. They the come hot, for butter bangs. Because the hot wings are great. And then they print shirts the with, with guy. Right. And, right. So, I mean, I get it, but. Yeah, but you can get them delivered, too. <laughs> right, oh, they, that I didn't know. <laughs> but, I, but, you know. We need a plan, and we don't have one. We I, have zero plan. I agree. And uh, there was a comment made last night about updating the mass plan. And when you look at, you know, what we're doing, it all begins with a plan in my mind, right? And so 
Um, I don't think we can afford to give up on Methuen, because if you look at um, Haverhill, let's take Haverhill as an example, right? The downtown of Haverhill, um, 10 years ago, was kind of in the same situation Methuen's in, right? And through grants and, and you know, targeting private industry, et cetera, they've made some places in the downtown area, um, I'll call them destinations that people want to go to, they go out to eat, right, and things like that. And they don't have to all be restaurants, but I think the, you know, the 40 hours to start, I think you've got to make certain things a destination. And I'd point out also, Tom, if you look at North Andover, Main Street has come a long way, right? Yes, it has. And so to me... Uh, Thanks to guys like Phil DiCologero. Yeah, so if you look at if you look at Haverhill and North Andover, it's true that we've got um, Tuscan Village and um, Riverwalk happening, right? But I don't think I think you can still bring people to the city, right? You, I think the point that was made that's right on is you got to focus on the business side, right? We're we're so heavy on the development of uh, residential compounds that we have kind of lost our recipe a little bit on the business. Now, the new balance was, is a shot in the arm, but that's, that needs to be just the beginning, right? So we need to do more of that. But I mean, ideally, our tax base should be 25% commercial. I think last time I looked, we were on a ballpark about 12. I mean, we're, we're not building up the business. And unfortunately, we're, we, we can't compete. We're not, if we don't do something with the loop, it's going to be the Methuen Mall all over again. We're not going to bring in any more Kmarts or Marshalls. It's just, it's not practical, especially with all the development going on around us. We need to bring something that Methuen doesn't already have. We need to bring in a theater. Or a, uh, we need to become a destination. We, we need, like I said last night, we need a shtick. We need something that separates us from everyone around us. Go ahead, Jay. Okay, so um, I'm going to agree with that. One of the things that um, we, uh, myself, a couple of counselors, and some residents uh, attended some zoning board meetings. Uh, there was a affordable housing project um, slated for... Uh, our current com commercial corridor, which is at, at the Loop. Uh, if you attended the 4th of July event that happened this year, I mean, the weather was beautiful. It was a great city event. That place was, the businesses were hopping. As uh, Deanne said, you, we need a draw. So when the proposal, matter of fact, um, we have a gentleman in the front audience that came with us, and we really were adamant that we didn't know if that was the right location to put this particular housing project because we need that space for uh, commercial entities. Uh, it was going to be in the middle of um, TD Bank North and the Target store. It was a huge. Uh, it was going to be a huge apartment complex. We have one right down the street, Summit Hill. Uh, so we went there as residents, as a city councilor. I just was going to support the residents, and then at the very end, I gave my. Um, opinion to the zoning board because I respect the boards. I know each board has their own authority, and I just wanted them to hear that I felt that I didn't think that was the particular the right spot for this particular place. That I would rather see something um, like like a bowling alley, uh, anything to draw the residents. So then after they go there, they can go over and support the businesses at the Loop. Come to find out, it did pass. The zoning board did uh, t took their vote, and and they. They passed it. However, two years later, the the permit has now since expired. So it, it never came to fruition, but I feel that at this point, if elected mayor, I want to look at that area and and make it commercial. And I think that would be uh, looking at the master plan, as I said last night, expanding on that. And one thing that I also want to say, grant writing, as um, Mr. Perry had stated, we need a, a full-time grant writer here in the city. We do a wonderful job. I know the police department has somebody that does write grants. The fire department has an individual that's not solely a grant writer, but they do write grants. And we have somebody in the community development, but I think it would be imperative for us to hire one person because that money that we pay that person in a yearly salary, the benefits will absolutely outweigh that. So that would be something I would be consider bringing in. And that way they're looking at all aspects of grant writing, such as, as we talked about last night, a new, uh, whether it's a DPW facility, a new building, they can concentrate and see what's out there. And that is would be their full-time job. So with all due respect, I think that it's, it's again, where what Methuen does, we stay in a silo. To say we want to keep it commercial is great, but the formula that's out there it's working everywhere else. They're doing it now in Salem. They're doing it in Lawrence. They did it in Linfield, up and down the East Coast and all over the country. You want to have those apartments. If we could put apartments over the loop. Again, I'm not an architect. I don't know how feasible it is or what kind of renovations would need to happen. But if you could put the apartments above the loop, that's what they're doing everywhere. And then put a parking garage behind the movie theater, get rid of the yard, put a splash pad out there, a park, a basketball court. 
But isn't the problem... Now you have a destination and you have a captive audience, Tom. That's what these businesses need. That's why it works everywhere else. You have a captive audience. Now, those people who live there, they're going to go down to Stop and Shop. They're going to go down to the restaurants. They're going to go to the nail salon or that particular bank. They're, they're hostages. They're hostages to those businesses, and that's why the model works. I drive around with Thune, and I see for sale signs everywhere I look. Mm. And it seems to me, and again, I live in North Andover, so I have, no, I have no skin in the game here, but it seems to me that the problem is too much residential development and not enough business development. Putting apartments above the loop or doing stuff like that, when people are selling their houses and fleeing, just, just I, to me at least, seems like you 10 years from now, you're going to be looking I, at a dilapidated building. Well, I, I do want to address that. That was dis- sure. discussed last night. And I don't want to be the sky is falling. Trust me when I tell you, that when you see the for sale signs up, um, there are more for sale signs than political well, signs well, in the well, right But you now. want to know what the value? Well, some of, of those are moving. The value yeah. of They're the Thorn property the mm-hmm. is out of control. We have houses in this community up in the the um, Emerald Pine area that are going in upwards of seven hundred thousand dollars. So our community is location rich. People are selling their houses, but people are coming in and buying. You cannot keep a house on the market in Methuen today. It's a hot commodity. So I always want to look at the positive aspect of it. I don't want to be the sky is falling because you know what? Yes, we have problems. Other communities have problems. But when we go in and we fix them, so yes, you do see houses for sale, but they're being, they're being bought almost immediately. The inventory is very low. Yeah, and this, you know, if you go back to the commercial, I, I think the commercial has to be the focus, right? Can you just pull this in a little more so we can hear you better? Thanks, I pushed sorry. it away when I was coughing. Yeah. Um, I think you got to look at the commercial a little bit more. You look at places like the, the Joe's Crab Shack place that seemed to be a thriving business for two restaurants, and yet it went out of, you know, it, both times it went out of business, right? And so to me, that's a prime spot, and we've got to kind of take a look as part of our plan that how do you attract people to the loop and, uh, you know, look at the kind of stores that will bring people. And, and that's what I mean when I say destination, mm-hmm. right? People, <clears throat> people go out to eat a, a lot, right? That's a fact, right? It's not Texas where they go out to eat four times a week, but people in New England go out to eat a, a lot, right? I eat out almost every day. <clears throat> and there's the fact right there. So whether it's, you know, um, bringing something in that will draw them like a, a higher-end restaurant, you know, some of the ones that you would travel to go to, that's how you kind of start peeling this back a little bit by getting people involved on the commercial side. And so I'm fully supporting, you know, talking to developers and commercial folks and kind of bringing business into the city. That's where we got to go. Don? Well, I think you can do, uh, like you have a little uh, festival right on the river. Mm-hmm. We could do stuff like that. We have a park on the river or do it at the loop. We have Methuen Day. Yeah, we have Methuen Day too, but. We do, but there were two events in Lawrence this week. There's an event almost every weekend over right. the summer in Lowell. There's the feast on the North End. They Methuen, have them in Havel. Winnie Kinney Castle Methuen has, has events. Methuen Day, which I mean, last year was great. Unfortunately, the weather didn't really agree, but. We, we need to build on it. We have so many natural resources but those are us. local events. I'm talking like bringing in need. a big name, but like f- the Feast in Lawrence. They did a companion, uh, the Common there. Uh, they had Michael Amante and they exactly. had Tony Bennett. But why can't those we do people that in Methuen? are going to draw people. Look. Why can't we do that in Methuen? So we're on the cover of the Tribune we or on, on the Globe for something good. Why does it always have to be a blunder or a fiasco or a shooting? All right, so I, guess, I agree. So, so I guess this, I mean, it's great to identify the problem. How do you do that? How do you, how do you get big name people and big named events into Methuen, given what's going on right now? Well, I'll tell you. If, if I no, go ahead. Take, so we built a beautiful $100 million uh, renovated high school. We have the most beautiful auditorium in there that is not being used to its capability. I did go to a fundraiser for the band, and they had a, a good crowd in there, and it was wonderful. People went out before they had come, or maybe even after the, the event. They visited a local restaurant, came in, watched the show. It was like a Vegas-style show. Um, I attended the um, Foster Kids of the Merrimack Valley. They had an El- uh, Elton John impersonator, and I and I seen Elton John live. He was excellent, this impersonator. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to bring him. That was a standing room only crowd. It was wonderful, but he was a somebody that the city could hire and bring in to that building, load it up for three days, maybe do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it, but it's out, it's up to us to promote the city of Methuen. Right. So yes, absolutely. And As we, a mayor, we, that's your job. Yes, right. We, yeah, you got to be a cheerleader. So you got to use places like the the football uh, field. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Michael Amante here last November. He was in concert here, and it sold out. 
right? We had them at the Festival of Trees. That was the kickoff to the 25th what was, anniversary. What was the bang for the buck? Did the, did, did, did the city get any kind of revenue from that? Um, well, uh, not directly because uh, the festival is a nonprofit, so the city would have to apply for grants to the festival. So Methuen is the city that's gotten the most money from the festival over the 25 years, far and away. Uh, but recently, you know, to the previous point that was made, there's not a lot of grants being submitted from the city of Methuen. There is one for some cemetery work and some other things, but, you know, that's another area uh, I would capitalize on now that I've left the festival is I, I would, you know, have the grant writer write a lot of grants to the festival to preserve some of these properties, right? And, and uh, the Michael Amante concert sold out, and he was fantastic. And I got to admit, I, I didn't even really know who he was when they said, oh, we're bringing in Michael Amante. I was like, oh, okay. Who? Right? Yeah. 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 So, but everybody said, oh, you know, where you been living? So My recommendation is that we have Don. I understand he, yes. does, he does a great Elvis. Elvis. That's yep. it. Yeah. You got him. We right? book him. We'll book him. Well, just don't tell anybody it's not the real Elvis. They won't know once he starts singing, right? That's right. Don, do you have anything yeah. more on this? I was going to say, we have uh, the AMC Theater, mm-hmm. and they have all these credits before the movie commercials. Why can't the town of Methuen do something there to advertise the city? You know, like uh, I've seen them on TV, the like California, come to California, right? You know, we're Promo- gonna start yeah. highlighting our Promoting our historical Promoting. thing. Yeah, I think I think uh, uh, him singing uh, Beverly Eskel's song. I, I, love I like Methuen. Methuen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm a homeless advocate. I spend a lot of time in Lawrence. Uh, with the homeless, and uh, we talked about this during one of the district council debates, and I definitely want you guys to talk about this a little bit. Uh, if you live in Methuen, you uh, have a half a million dollar home, you pay taxes your whole life, you get a good job, and suddenly your wife throws you out, or you lose your home, you lose your job, and you become homeless, there are no services for you in Methuen. Same thing with my hometown in North Andover, there's no services for you. And so these people who become suddenly homeless, who pay taxes to their own home community for their entire life, have nothing for them, so they end up in Lawrence. And I know because I feed them. And I ask them, where are you from? What's your name? I talk to them. And there's an awful lot of people who are on the streets of Lawrence who are Methu- were Methuen residents, now they're living on the streets of Lawrence. It seems to me that every community has a senior center, Almost every community has a, a youth center. Why, why doesn't Methuen have, and can we have, like a homeless center? Where if there's somebody be, suddenly becomes homeless, there's a place they can go where there are services that they can partner maybe with the psychological center or some other place where they can go so that they're not... Dan, Dan Rivera's biggest problem with the homeless community, and he's not wrong about this, is that most of the homeless people in Lawrence aren't from Lawrence. And his, his view is, if the people of their hometowns only took care of their own people, Lawrence wouldn't have half the problems that, that they have. Guys like Mike Samad, who's a police officer who's here today, wouldn't be out there arresting them for using drugs, breaking into cars, breaking into homes, trying to get their fix. So I want you guys to talk about this because it's a huge problem with the opioid crisis, and it's a problem that I think Methuen has been neglecting and ignoring, and the next mayor really needs to tackle it. Yeah, and I think, so one of the things that, you you know, is happening at the same time is all the local high schools, and we got a lot of students at the high schools, have adopted uh, uh, a requirement for the students to volunteer. Methuen High, uh, PMA, Central Catholic, all the local high schools require, and, and there's two different definitions of, of service in those volunteer community. So I think, you know, finding a place to at least provide food and shelter for homeless people would be something that would be high on the agenda because we do have volunteer workforce readily available, right? And they're not hard to find, right? And so I say that because I know I've, I've pursued volunteers for a lot of different things, right? Mm-hmm. And you get them, right? Because they, they have the requirement for service. So I think, you know, we got to identify a place and make it a priority and then use some of the volunteer. You know, I, I think people are worried about the, the costs associated with it with our current financial position, right? Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, if you look at some of the places that we have, um, it doesn't take a lot to put in a structure that could feed the homeless for weeks at a time or provide a bed. We, we do it when there's a heat Right. When there's emergency. a flood. When there's, or, yeah, right. yeah. So there's, there's a recipe to do it, and I think we can follow that recipe. And it's all, you know, how, how do you take care of your fellow man, which is really ultimately what we're all going to be judged on in the end, right? right. So. so the drawback to that is attracting other, like Dan has, Attracting other people to your city that aren't from your city. Right now, you're bringing all that into Methuen. How do you how do you regulate that? Well, you 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 you. I mean, you, you, you have to set them up all over. Like Lawrence has to cooperate and right. do it. North and over. I think you offer services for Methuen residents, and if they show right. up and they've got an electric bill, that they just go. I just dealt with uh, with your girlfriend. Uh, called me last last week or the week before and said that there was a Methuen family. The 
Uh, the landlord threw them out with no notice, took all their stuff, threw it out in the yard, and now they're walking around trying to find out what are, what are they going to do. So they ended up at the senior center. They called Sue. They ended up with Sue. And Sue called me and said, what can we do for these people? Now, we're in, now suddenly we're in crisis mode. We've got a family of three. Um, they're almost all elderly, right? A mother, a father, and the kid, and they're, and they're all almost elderly. And there's nothing, there's nothing in what we called... The uh, Daybreak Shelter, we called Lazarus House, both in Lawrence, nothing in Methuen, no place to call in Methuen, nowhere to go in Methuen. And now you've got these three Methuen residents walking around the streets of Lawrence trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. So I, I will touch on that. Um, I'm on the board of the Psychological Center. And thank you for that. You're welcome. You guys do amazing work right. there. And, and we were actually in some trouble when I first got on the board uh, that, the, that it was going to, it was, we were in some financial trouble. And uh, one of my uh, friends, former elected official on the Great Alarm and School Committee, called me up and said, you know, we could use your service. And we went in there. We removed a few of the board members in there who were complacent. And we have turned that whole entire organization around. We put... Um, Karina Papalato is, is the CEO of that company. She has done a tremendous job. Yes, she and, has. And, and I will explain a little bit about the Daybreak Shelter. As you said, the Daybreak Shelter allows people from the, the Merrimack Valley to go in there, and, and we provide them a great place to sleep, a warm shower, and food. Um, it is the second. There's only two wet shelters in the entire state of Massachusetts: one in Worcester and one in Lawrence. But it's there, and it, and we get state funding for that. Mm -hmm. And, and they're at capacity every, every night. Every night. They have 55 available Correct. beds, and they're at capacity every night. So the 55 people that Correct. make it in there, there's still 200 on the street exactly. trying to get in. And, that's, and, and again, and we also uh, run two houses for women in, who are recovering from substance abuse. Um, they are well-run programs. They are in neighborhoods which, where you would never know because we are very good neighbors. Same thing with the, um, the daybreak shelter. As you mentioned, maybe the mayor of Vera um, doesn't like that there are other people. But guess what? We are very good neighbors. There's not any problems over there, and we service the true needy. If somebody like the psychological center or another shelter would have a proposal to come into Methuen, um, I would absolutely take a good look at that as long as the organization that's running it is credible so that we are working together to help those people because they need people who have a clinical director on site. That's some of the state requirements that are required so that to help these people, bring them in and see what we can offer them, whether it's a job assistance, whether it's some type of help to guide them if they run into uh, financial um, or even just life, life gets in the way sometimes. So uh, that's something that if a proposal it can happen to any of us. Any of I've us. been homeless yeah. twice in my yeah. life. I can Absolutely. tell you it can happen to any it of is. us. And so there are services available, though, through Executive Office of Health and Human Services has these FRCs, the Family Resource Centers that are out there. Well, yep. they'll help you with job placement. They'll help you with finding a place to live. I mean, it's, it's not the best service in the world, but it is a service that is available. Unfortunately, our reality is we don't, we don't have the money to do what we need to do now. We, we, we can't outfit a shelter. However, the next mayor, and I would be working closely with our delegation, uh, Office of Housing and Community Development, they have a division that does nothing but shelters. And if it's a true problem in Methuen, which I'm sure the data is there to back up, why can't we get a shelter? We have plenty of empty buildings. Why can't we use that? Why should we be passing our problem off to Lawrence? Right. Because right, Lawrence isn't real happy about it. I can't say that I blame <laughs> them. I don't want people showing up at my house that are un un uninvited either. So, I mean, but we need to work with our delegation. Those folks are out there to represent us. They're our voice in Boston. We, we need to be using them to advocate so we can have these state agencies that have the funding that we don't open something here. Right. The right. need needs to be expressed. The need needs to be pushed. I just want to make sure that whoever becomes the next mayor of Methuen begins to address this issue because no prior, prior mayor or council have done it. And I think it's probably just because of lack of awareness. So I want to make sure that there's more awareness of it. John, John do you have any uh, thoughts on this? I'd be all for any, anything to help the homeless or... Any of the residents, um, you know, the senior center. I was just talking to Corinne today. <clears throat> they would like to be a like a warming shelter, mm -hmm. but they don't have a generator. Yeah, you know, it's like why aren't we supplying them with a generator? Right. I'd like to give you guys an opportunity. Uh, I watched your debate, your forum that was called the debate, but it was really a forum last night. Uh, and I know that the people at MCTV were very well-meaning, and they did the best that they could. Uh, but I, I don't think people learned enough. So I'd like to – because they had a, a rule last night that you couldn't address each other, I'd like you guys to be able to ask each other a question uh, or at least discuss with each other an issue. I'm going to sit back. I, I, I have, uh, again, no skin in the game. 
Um, I, I'd like you guys, I, I, I know that there's a lot of animus among some of you, and I know some of you get along very well, and I'd just like for you guys to be able to ask another candidate a question and engage with them, whoever wants to go first. Wow, no one wants I'll, to jump I'll on pick, that grenade. I'll pick somebody if you don't go. Dan uh, I, mean, you, go I, I guess I'll do it. Um, I mean, and for the three of you, this, the, the, city in this, the history in this city is that, like I've said a couple of times here, is we, we protect our own. I mean, for the most of you, you, you guys have never really been that deep involved, and in, you've, you've been here, been around for quite a while. Why should people think you're going to be any different? Why should people think that you're going to represent them? And I know that the first response is, you know, my record, or I have no ties, or I didn't take money. But that, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, unfortunately, Don, I mean, you and I don't really know each other that well. Neil and I have talked a few times, and you and I have talked quite a few times. And... I mean, there, there are people out there right now who say, you know, Neil's got his issues because of his relationships or perceived relationships, and you have your issues right. because of your relationships and perceived relationships. Why should we think, if I don't get through on the 17th, why should either of you get my vote? Because how am I supposed to believe that it's going to be any different, especially when I, I can see who's, who's supporting both of you? Great. So I'll, I'll answer <laughs> first. And... When you say, um, do you have any, is there any proof? I mean, a lot of things are being said out there just to throw out to see if it sticks. And um, there is, when you say protect your own, I've never protected anybody. I don't need uh, to protect The, so the solicitor what? and the auditor, those are yours and they were protected. They weren't protected because, again, like I they said. They skated. Well, again, there's an, I don't want to talk about investigations. I don't think that it's right because I don't want to ever impede an investigation. As you know, we have report one. Um we're not, you're not, I'm not 100% sure that's the case. And again, as far I as... I hope so. Well, again, we'll, time will tell. I'm going to say that. With, with all due respect, though, yes. Mr. Kelly was allowed to retire with a golden parachute after sitting at a public meeting and refusing the directive of the city council with to answer a question. a pretty hefty check in his pocket. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'd like to take you back to the meeting where um, he came in front of the city council. I was not the chair. I was a um, city councilor at the time when the... the, the um, Resolution came up about uh, 75% of his buyback, uh, going from 35 to 75. And if you want to look back at how I voted, I voted no. It wasn't a popular decision. It was the right decision. I don't vote for popular. I vote for what's right. I don't care who it is. Um, I have also voted and did not um, reinstate Peter McQuillan. Former, my, I was the chairperson at the time in 2012. Honestly, you know, his reappointment came up and he didn't have my vote. So again, uh, it, this situation that, that's in front of us today is still being looked at. Uh, I will never impede an investigation, so that's going to be my, my comment on, on that issue. But I don't protect anybody, never would. And as, as you said, Dan, and I respect it, um, my record is clean. And I, do, I am the only one of us here who has a record to go by. That's not a bad thing, but my record is good. And to mar my record um, on you know, statements like you protect people, never protected a person, instead of saying it, give us an instance. And um, and that's what I have to say on that. Anybody have a question for a fellow candidate? Well, I, I want to answer. Well, oh, go right ahead. Sorry, I, let these guys I apologize. So that's yeah, all right. Um, and so you know, I, I say um, there's a lot of people saying I'm a Johnny come lately. So my family's been in this town forever. My father was a deputy police chief. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm in favor of the superior's contract. He would be rolling in his grave. He's been dead 25 years. So that's one of the rumors that's out there. Um, but I'm going to take a head on because I believe in accountability, right? Uh, and you have to be accountable. So the thing that most people whisper about me is that Sharon Pollard is supporting my campaign. And, and like her or hate her, right, she has her opinion and she's her way. Uh, many of you guys are closer to her politically than I am. And the people that know us both know that. I am proud that I have a campaign where people who are Democrats or Republicans who are independents, some who voted for Trump, some who didn't, are supporting me, right? I am guaranteeing no favors to anybody because, and, and that's the, the money part, not taking the money part, because you, you, the city needs to be run like a business. And as I've done the walking and talking, that's what the residents keep saying. They want transparency. They want a government that that is open and honest and shows them what is being done on their behalf. And you can't, you know, you cannot let personal political agendas get in the way. And so uh, I'll use Sharon and the Festival of Trees. It's a shame that the city of Methuen hasn't applied for more grants from the Festival of Trees. That's not on the Festival of Trees, that's on the city of Methuen, right? Because the festival is a nonprofit. 
you know, I joined the Festival of Trees when I did a tour at PMA. And I don't know if you guys have ever done it. It's a fantastic place, right? And I see the good sisters are moving out. So that's something we got to worry about, too. If you go into that pink Italian marble room, you understand that, you know, a lot of money was spent in, in putting that together. And that's something that we should preserve, right, in my mind. So that's how I joined the festival. When I did a tour of PMA and one of the good sisters showed me that there was paneling over tapestries that were probably priceless, right? And so, you know, Methuen should be asking for more money for the Festival of Trees, but that's where personal political agendas get in the way. My father raised me as a former Marine and a, a police officer that all you have in life in the end is your word. That's how I brought up my four kids, right? When I give my word, I keep my word, right? So nothing I can say to you right now would convince you, but when I'm elected, you'll see that I stick to my word. I won't take donations from city employees, and I'll, I'll maintain a transparent attitude to the city residents and represent them in government because that's what they're thirsting for. Don? Yep. I have no political uh, connections anywhere. Uh, you mentioned I might have more connection to Sharon than you do. I know her. I dealt with her when I was in the Cub Scouts once, and that's as far as any political connection goes with her. Um, I would be open and honest with anybody. I, would, I believe people should get a job because of what they know, not who they know. Agreed. 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 So Agreed. My, I guess my rebuttal across the, the table is, is and I've, I've said this several times over the last couple of months, is perception matters. And be it in, in Neil's case where at the 4th of July, you know, he's, he's flanked by Sharon and like, like the Secret Service, or in, in Jen's case with her kickoff and it's being a, a who's who of political, the, the, the political group. I mean, that's, that's what people see and the perception is that it's, it's more of the same. And I guess- But, but do we judge people based on who do. supports no, them? I, I, ran, I ran for school committee and there were people who voted for me and held signs for me that I couldn't stand, but they thought that I'd be a great school committee <laughs> member and they went out and they held a sign for me. I walked by, I didn't even say hi to them when I saw them. I didn't even like them, do but I they were holding a them? sign for me. I'm not going to tell them, no, put the but sign down. I'm, I'm nobody's judge. And again, if somebody wants to support me, Tom, that you might not like, that Dan may not like, that Neil or Dawn may not like, if they think enough of me that they want to support me, and quite frankly, then they think I'm going to do a good job, then I'll take their support. Um, again, if Mr. Perry has people who... He, we just mentioned, I'll, I'll say it because their names were said, the Pollards. That's up, that's up to Mr. Perry. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, but don't hide it. it there's no need to hide there's it. There's no need to. I didn't no, hide it. No, there isn't. Um, so at, at that point... I believe that if, if they're working for him and they have faith in him, that's that's their prerogative. I, I don't take that away from people, that they should be able to support the candidate that they do want I to I wrote support. a notebook item that's going to be out today. Actually, the paper's being printed as we speak um, about this, that um, Jim DeJuga is supporting yes. Jen Canan. Sharon Pollard, Sharon Pollard is supporting Neil Perry. You shouldn't be judging people based on who's holding a sign for somebody who's supporting someone. You should be judging them based on what they can do for your community. And that's just my opinion. Again, I, I don't vote with those. I so. agree with you, but unfortunately, the people at the doors, they've been burned so many times, they now, it's guilty by association. Yeah. Well, and I, the only politics. thing I'd say, so you got to be careful, Dan, right? Because I really like you, but you're, you're starting to create another divide, which is you, you keep talking about old Methuen and, and, and you, know, you being new Methuen. I'm a big fan of saying to lead a community, you got to know the community, right? And so that that's not a shot at you. It just means you have to understand the people. I get that they're frustrated. What they're frustrated with is the lack of accountability, the lack of transparency. That's that's what they're telling us at the doors. That is what they're telling us at the door. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm not I, I'm not hiding anybody who supports me, right? Sound off is the vehicle that's being used to do that, and and, and I say this publicly. And I mean, they've right? taken For, cheap shots at all of us, but. But people, you know, I've said this to people who work for me, don't, don't use sound off. If you've got a complaint about me, I've got an open town hall because a shot was taken at my daughter last Saturday and then it was put on social media in groups that I couldn't even respond to. That is over the line. Well, that, well thank Over you for line. saying that, but welcome to my world. Yeah. And welcome to my world yeah. by particular people that are sitting 10 feet away from us from yeah. your campaign, Mr. Perry. Yeah. Are you kidding? 
I mean, my God, you've been around for about an hour and a half, and somebody went after your daughter. And honestly, yeah. I don't yeah. agree with that because nope. you know what? I think if your daughter possesses the skill to answer an emergency phone call yeah. for the Methuen Police Department, she shouldn't have to leave her job just because her dad's going to be Did you mayor. read the sound off? I don't. Counselor? I, uh, you know what? I don't really. Okay, the sound know. off didn't, it wasn't after. Not reading the was, Tribune get you big points on this show, <laughs> by the way. I, I didn't. But, so what but the I sound off said. I had heard about it. I what the sound off said was not, it, it said that her quitting is convenient. Oh. Right? Uh, a, a young lady who's been looking for a job for eight months to suggest that it's politically motivated for her to get a job elsewhere is, silly. so, it's silly. It, you know. I don't think, again, I don't, I, if your daughter doesn't like her job, I believe that's her prerogative, but I would never expect your daughter, especially if she has the qualifications, she's a Methuen resident, I believe Methuen residents first, I don't believe she has to lose her job just because her dad wants she's to not, run. She's not for, losing her job. She no, left her left job. her job. She hasn't yeah. left it yet. Yeah. But um, with that with that said, and I do want to talk about this because again, you're talking about accountability, and everybody knows my family members, my three, you know, my family members that are public first responders. I have two of them and two school teachers. Proud as anything, but heroes, I, heroes, by the way. Thank you. A firefighter and a police and, officer who put their and, lives on the line. And, and just for anybody, oh, thank you. Thank you. You don't have to thank me, thank them, because this is my service that I offer, because I can't be a police officer, I can't be a firefighter. But here's my, my concern. When when I started my council run, my brother was already on there. He followed in the footsteps of my dad, who was a retired lieutenant. These are admirable uh, occupations. Mr. Perry, when you talk about accountability, and again, maybe it's changed, but you sent a letter out to the community as a mass, a mass letter. I received it. I didn't know who you were. Um, I wasn't thinking of running for mayor at the time because I was still on the city council. And there was this this letter that was sent to all the residents of Methuen that you want, that you want something free of conflict. I believe it was dated May of this year. Your daughter worked for the police department then. I don't know if you decided as you went through the process that they found out. It's okay. But I would have come out and said, I have a daughter in the police department, and I will take any efforts that I can to eliminate any conflict that you create. Your daughter does not create the conflict. And this is what I want the audience that I'm talking to today. Um, we had this question last night at MCTV, and I said, it is not your family member who's the conflict. There is a conflict of interest law. We have an attorney here. The conflict of interest law is put there to allow elected officials to take right and action that they would not put themselves in conflict for voting on a measure that is put in front of us that a family member would benefit. Again, I do have a record to go on. My record is spotless. When you get a letter in the community and it's penned, penned, that, that free of conflict, and that was in May, we're still in September, if the person's still there, just come out and say it. And you're talking about everybody throws the word transparent. Be transparent. So that's, I, I don't want to get into it because I want to. No, when I don't, you're done. No, yeah, thank you. But the reason why I want to go forward from here is because I know that we've had issues and I want to start getting Methuen back on track, which I have done as the city council chairperson. We have put mechanisms in place, and I want a more positive healing community. But you come in, you know, as a newcomer, and, and you're saying all these buzzwords, conflict of interest, you know, transparency. But that letter was not transparent. It just of wasn't. It was. Of course it was. Well, not so in you, my opinion, you, uh, just oh, okay. my opinion. I have the right to my opinion. You are. You do. Thank it, you. It's wrong, but you have the right to it. Oh, well, so, uh -huh. so here's I have the, the letter, Mr. Perry. You uh, don't want uh, me to rip you, it out, do you? Please, whip okay. it out. Um, take it out. Please take it out. I will. I have it right yeah, here. Get it out. I'll, thank you. And so um, if you listen to what I said, I told you she's been looking for a new job for eight months. So mm -hmm. I'll let you do the math and okay. figure out where that takes you. All right? So long before the year started, long before I decided to run for mayor, mm -hmm. She has made the decision that she wants to move on. So I will enter office with no conflicts. The, the issue with conflicts is in the minds of the voters, mm -hmm. right? We've, we've had issues where we've had important issues for the city that you have not been able to opine on as a member of council. Right, right? but that changes on the mayor. I hope you know the difference between the legislative yes, and executive. Thank yes, you. Yes, I do. Right? But... Your initial approach that you wrote, if we want to bring up things that are written, mm -hmm. was that the CAFA would do everything. The CAFA Not would everything. be responsible for everything. Not everything. Not negotiating? So the CAFO, again, so that I'm glad you brought that up yes. because and I do want to discuss that. Yep. 
when I ran against former, former Mayor Zani, that seemed to be a bone of contention. Would you, how are you going to negotiate the contracts? I said, I'm going to tell you how. You, as a mayor, you put people in, in positions where you're hiring the best. You have a, an attorney. You have a uh, chief of staff. You have everybody. And you do. As mayor, and believe me, I talk to the Ethics Commission all the time. Went on council. I'm dealing with a new council. And they always ask... Uh, it, it, you know what things can be done, so I do call the ethics to make sure that we're following the leg of the law, which I would do when I go into the mayor's office. But you know what? Back then, in 2013, I was given almost the same response I'm getting today. Well, how are you going to negotiate it? Well, I'm going to ask the residents to think, how did that work out for us? We had a mayor who said he was the education mayor. According to this, Mr. Perry's letter, a budget so poorly planned and managed, leaving no options but a $4 million state bailout. That was Mayor Zani's budget, not the current administration's. Uh, a public safety contract that no one understood, leaving us with legal and financial uncertainties. And, ladies and gentlemen, you watch those tapes. Mr. Duggan, you have that up. It was the former administrator that thought they knew everything to go into that room. And I truly believe that they did not have the understanding or the background to negotiate those specific contracts. Apparently, we're seeing that now. You so guys could have tabled it. it, it right. So it, but but you, you, keep, you keep bringing it to where the city council, you want to blame the mayor for everything. No, I don't. You want to say you did a great job on the high school, you did a great job on the football field. All the screw-ups were the mayor's fault. No. Never, never the said citizens he, are looking he, he, for accountability. Correct, That's but, what they're looking for. But see, for. You are, you're saying that because yeah. I didn't say that. So what I did say is as it was presented. Now, if you yeah. had a contract presented to you yeah. that you can go over to that coffee shop and buy a cup of coffee for two dollars, yep. and you get over there, and you go. I'm doing it. I want it. Two dollars, and you walk over there, and it's five. Yeah. You were told something different, now yep. weren't you? Yeah. So here's my thing. I've already spoke about the contracts. Yep. There is accountability. I said, knowing what we know today, this is there's a, an old saying. It's called Monday morning quarterback. Yep. Very easy to do that. Yep. But it, I'm not the only one. All nine of us were, were told the same thing. And I and I said, I will sit here and say, if we knew today, very easy. Life, it happens in life. Oh, I wish I didn't do that. If we knew today, what, then what we knew today, it would be a different story. story. Not just for Jennifer Kinnan, yeah. I believe for the entire nine city councils. Did you read the contract? Yes, I did. And I understood it as presented, Mr. Perry, as presented to us. Okay, I said that. I don't yeah. If you want me to say it again, I'll say nope. it again. Um, but my question is, going forward and seeing this, and you're asking for people, I am being honest, and, and mm -hmm. I said it before, I understood it as presented, yep. it came to the council, yep. we sat there, we had, again, you can watch the tape, I did. nobody said anything, again, what would make us think to ask the DPW, their boilerplate language, did you read the contracts, how on page one it tells you who the city is, should I, should I have asked who the city was, so there are things there that says O oh, two and two, and there were things done today so, that we are going to put safeguards in place as mayor, yep. that it would never so, happen. I, I don't again. want to belabor this, right? But we, we keep skipping over the fact that. It's great for ratings, you guys is. going at it's each okay. other. I'm so, watching the numbers. We just keep skipping over this is on my question, so you're welcome. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we keep skipping over the fact that we had a, a city resolution, 4720. I'm going to keep saying Correct. it. Correct. And you know, who, you know who authored that? Do you know who authored that? Steve Zani was the author of that. When yeah. Billy Manzi was the mayor, yeah. he was the chairman. As the mayor, again, presenting to us. So, again, yes, as a city councilor, not knowing and seeing the effects of that, I would absolutely say we should have had it. We didn't have it. And that is where, again, that's Correct. why we well, have Let's give Neil a chance to answer because okay. then we got to get the other two guys I know, in. I know. So, so there's that, and then there's the charter piece of it. Yes. So you're, you know, you're, you're taking shots at me, and I'm going to turn okay. around and say to you, you know, you're saying, hey, I'm going to put policies in place. I'm yes. starting to put policies in place that wouldn't happen. You violated two essential policies of the city government. We don't have the kind of a government where these positions are ceremonial. You can, anybody can say, I, I was told if, I, if we go out after this, you and I, to dinner, and I tell you, you're going to get this dinner free, right? <laughs> uh, and maybe a better example. We go buy a car, right? right? Are you going to read that contract and understand what it says? Yes. Okay. And, and that's what city council's required to do, Correct. too. And I right? did, right. But can I say something? Sure. So just to let the residents know, too, this, and if you're knocking on doors, I hope you're not saying this, the Superior Officers Union is not being paid the numbers that were in the original contract. Agreed. Matter of fact, Agreed. and I think you supported yep. it, and I would like to see how you would have uh, supported the MOU, it is when, again, this became a much bigger problem because of the fact that they saw how the city council and the mayor, and again... We're divided, yep. I don't know if we we're going to say we're divided, but then 
what they're going to look into is what happened in that room that caused this problem. And get, again, the school committee was the same thing. I don't think anybody on that school committee was sitting there rah rah ring that they were overspending $4 million. I, think I would they, have to disagree with you on I don't that, know. but I'm not running I don't, for you're office. You're not, so let's not add that. But <laughs> the point is, when it was found out that certain procedures weren't in place, same thing with us, the same thing, Mr. Perry, procedures that we should have followed. Yes. I'm going to, 100%. However, the same thing with the school committee. There were procedures that they should have came to us with the supplemental budget. They weren't, so let's put stuff in, in, in place to move our city forward rather than living back... Uh, in, in 2017. I've got to let the other two in because yes, you guys have had about I, 10 minutes okay. and I, I need to give these guys yeah. some fair time. You Go ahead, uh, Dan. So, I mean, not not to take a cheap no, shot. That's okay. But, no, I mean, take all the cheap shots I, I, you I, want. I know, I know you live for that, but yeah. it's not how I, not how okay. I want to do that's things. too bad. But you, you, you talk about your record and your history and, I mean, looking at the current mayor, yeah. he's got a, a resume that he should have walked into office and we, we should be the, the end-all, be-all of the city now. He's got all these connections and all these ties. I mean, what, and what good has it done us? I, I think we need someone up there who's a business person. I think we need someone who can go up there and run a $160 million business. I'm part of a team that manages a billion-dollar budget. This is what I do every day. Granted, when I do it at work, it's for health and human services. And here, it's for much more than that. But this, this, the city council does not prepare you to hire, fire, and maintain people. I mean, to be fair, you guys had two folks, and they screwed up, and... I mean, we not to belabor it, but they skated. Investigations are not to be determined, and we'll yeah. see. Yep. And that's, that yep. is what it is. Mm -hmm. But we're a $160 million agency, and we're not treating it like that. We're, we're, we're treating it like a playground. And I, I mean, not to belittle it, but that's, that's starting to be what it feels like. I mean, so I'll, I'll answer that. So again, yes, I'll, I will be honest with you. Your, your three newcomers' experience on that municipal budget is very important. I mean, it, it, you, you've never, I know you might work in, in procurement, but it's the budget that I have been working on for 10 years. Uh, working with elected officials is very different than being in an office and, and looking at a contract. Working with um, you know, school committee members, in fact, just to uh, pivot a little bit, uh, under the former, uh, my former council a couple years ago, they refused to have meetings with the school committee. And I, they yes, it sh they should. There was, there was a divide in the city and when I was the chair, but again, when you're sometimes a regular city council, you don't have the authority to say to whoever's on the school committee and uh, we want to have joint meetings. The first thing I did was work with the vice chair of the school committee and we've had meetings in my two years as the, as the chair. Um, Two years I've been the chair elected by my fellow peers because they know I'm an independent candidate. I want to get one other thing out. And then we're going to give Dawn some yes, time. Yes, we have to give Dawn time. Yep. So <clears throat> I've worked under, uh, I've worked alongside Mayor Zani, Mayor Manzi, and Mayor Jujuga. And, and a lot of times uh, I, I, I got along with all of them, but I don't go along. And if there was something that they put forward that wasn't in the best interest of the city, then guess what? Then, they, then my answer would be no. So I do want to say that my experience in the, I'm the only one out of us that has the, the experience with the municipal budget 10 years. And we did our wonderful budget cycle this time because now these procedures are being put in place. And being in the executive office, one thing I will tell you, being a 10 year city councilor, I know that I want to treat that body with the utmost respect because I know that they're coming from work or they're, you know, they want to give back and to put them in a position that I was put in, obviously, it was an awful position. We've got to give John some time. Okay, let's give it to Dawn. Thank you. I don't have really much to say on it, but I do want to commend you for coming you. and stepping forward and answering all those questions, being the only one left over from that. Uh, I know the personal attacks and stuff. I don't want to get into any personal attacks on anybody. Uh, it's easy to say after the fact, right. you know, I should have done this, I should have done that. But we do need to move on. Right. We, we, do. we just need to start fresh. Start talking. All the departments need to start talking, get together, and come to a solution. Right. I don't view them as personal attacks. They're facts and data, right? And so the fact that was brought up in the first hour of the debate is, you know, if... Well, you are if holding the, her the, accountable for Well, the city council is people. responsible for it. So if, if the police contract gets somehow arbitrated in the fall this year, there's no money in the budget to pay them, Right. So that would cause the city government to have to relook at everything right. from a 
a whole services, I do services, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that's the issue. But right? then as a mayor, I'll look at it. Ed, can we, can we uh, get like five extra minutes? Is that okay? Ed Sullivan, by the way, our fine, fine producer, let's give him a round of applause for giving five extra minutes. Because um, I want to give you guys a chance to, um, I want to give you guys a chance to do a closing argument. But before I do, Martino's Towing is a business in the city of Methuen. They've really been screwed by the last few administrations. They've been taken off the list to be able to tow for the city. No real reason given. Uh, they've reapplied. They've been told that if they reapplied, if they waited a certain amount of time, they could get back on the city. Um, they waited. They did what they were supposed to do, and they still can't get on. They're a sponsor today. I'm not just asking the question because they're a sponsor, because it is something that has really frosted me for the last couple of years, because I do know them, and they're great people. They do a great work. They do good towing services. They've towed my car more than once. Um, <laughs> If you guys become mayor, whichever one of you becomes mayor, will you promise to put all of this stuff from previous administrations, all the personal beefs, people not getting contracts, people being blacklisted, people like Martino's towing, are you going to come in with a clean slate and say, everybody, no matter what the past has been, everybody has the, the right to do business with the city? No personal political agendas. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But so, Tom, to be fair and to build on it. The way the towing contracts are done in the city, the mayor has absolute discretion. Right. So under 30B. Which is why which, I'm asking you right, guys. Which under 30B, which is the minimum. It is not the standard. It's not where you have to be. It's the floor you have to start from. If I'm mayor, everything goes out to a bid. Mm. It's open and transparent. That's the way I do my procurements now. People, the, the community has a right to know. I mean, right now you have Ronnie Perino, who has one of the towing contracts with Valley Towing, who also sits on the licensing board. To me, that's a conflict. But yeah. he carries one of those, and then you have another towing company that can't handle the big trucks who has to outsource that to a company outside of Lawrence, and where, I mean, like you said, Methuen residents first. There are plenty of Methuen businesses who get in the short end of the stick because, I mean, if you ask them, they're going to say it's because they don't, they don't pay into the, to the fund. But they're not wrong. Well, so I, 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 I mean, would I'm add not to saying that, yes or no, but they're, they're not wrong. I would add to that that uh, I come from an environment, you know, uh, that where you do government contracting with the federal government and with other governments. And the federal government requires in the, the industry that I'm in that at a minimum you do three solicitations, right? And so that's the kind of mindset you have to bring to the office that says anybody who's capable and has the service, that's what I mean when I say facts and data, that you evaluate them. And, you know, maybe there's multiple towing companes that do towing and you, you divide it up because that's the way it used to be. And that's the way it used you know, to as be. As a kid, right? So uh, I, I don't think it shuts them out because I remember, God, way back to when Red was, you know, running mine. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I think that Dan is 100% is correct. And You're going to be voting for him, right? Well, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think he's right. I think that Open up, open up uh, uh, all of them. In fact, just to let you know, I voted no against the trash contract here in Methuen. I didn't find that E.L. Harvey was doing anything wrong. I didn't feel that just a couple of thousand dollars should have separated uh, him from, from the rest. Uh, he, he sent us an email, and uh, I voted no on that contract. So, Don, I think everybody should have an equal opportunity. Uh, if they have the capability of doing the job, they should, they should be allowed. There should be no blackballing anywhere. All right, so hopefully Martino's towing is going to get back on the city, at least if they bid near the lowest bidder. Um, and, and I think it's an important thing because, you know, people think that it's because they're sponsors or because I know them, but those become the canaries in the coal mine. When you find someone that everybody knows, everybody knows they've got a good business and they're getting screwed, you have to wonder all the other people that we don't know that are getting screwed by this blackballing stuff that goes on. And so I, I bring it up because it's not just them, but they are a representative. They're an example of, of how the city has been mismanaged. I think some of the mismanaged. I kind of mentioned that last night in my one of my statements yeah. on that. We have to make it more susceptible to the smaller businesses in town, all these regulations that they have to go through. I'm one. I can have a sign, but it's got to be on my door. It can't be in my front yard. Right. But, uh, so to build on that, it's not about cheapest bid. State procurement loss is best value. Okay. Best value, yeah. You get what you pay for. And yeah. I don't want to save right. $50. That's not just and, the state. That's federal. Yeah, I mean, that's also right? good business. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> So um, Jen Kinnan was, uh, was, was kind of forced into this discussion about her family. Um, and, and so I just, to be fair, uh, one of the things that has been said about Neil Perry behind the scenes with all the whispering that happens with him um, is that you haven't voted in the last couple of elections. That's true. And they asked you to raise your hand last night, but didn't give you an opportunity to explain why. And yeah. I want to give you today, yep. before we do closing statements, an opportunity to explain. Sure. You haven't voted in the last few municipal elections. Why Correct. is that? I voted in the nationals. I didn't vote in the locals. And, and largely, I, I want to thank the people that are in city government now for 
shaking me out of it because uh, accountability is important. I admit that I was wrong. So what's happened in the last couple of years, I'm partly to blame because I didn't vote. Uh, but largely when you look around, you have the same people running all the time, moving from city council to the school committee, back to city council, et cetera. You had mayors, the last several mayors, you know, were running unopposed other than 2013, right? Uh, I, I had plenty going on and I thought, to be honest with you, Tom, it really didn't matter to me. And I've learned a painful lesson over the last several years. That Especially the last two. I, I should have, I should have <laughs> voted even if I left the ballot blank. Correct. I tell that right? to people and all so, the time. And so, you know, I say that there's over two-thirds of the residents of Methuen are in the category that I've been in, right? Well, I don't know, because I vote in the nationals. So I, I would tell you, you know, if you're out there and you're one of the people who are the two-thirds, you know, make your vote heard. Make your voice heard. Get out and vote, right? Mm -hmm. And, and l let's change this. And, what? Go ahead. And, and I do want to say something. Well, it really wasn't the last couple. It's been since 2001. Um, it's been since 18 years. Now, come on. Uh, again, I, I'm all for, you know, missing an election. Maybe somebody was on vacation, but it is one of your most important duties as in a, a citizen to go out and, write, and, and vote. Now, again, if you don't like who's in there, then as far as I'm concerned, then you go in there at the ballot box and you make your decision heard with no one seeing you and you put that X mark there. I have voted in every election that I can remember, at least for the last 25 years, every primary, state election, state primary, Methuen primary. We just had one in the East in 2017. And honestly, that you come into Methuen, all of a sudden when we have an issue and you, you again, have all the answers, where were you when, when, in, in, when you were electing your mayors in 2003 all the way up to 2017? So I, I really personally think that's just, you know, you're coming here and you're asking the fine people of our community to vote for you, and yet you couldn't exercise your yeah. right to vote. That's just my yep. problem, but that's and, all. And, and, and let me rebut that if I can. Yeah, of course. Quickly. So, uh, I already was accountable for it. And um, how many times in the last year were you unable to vote on city council? On important issues I, facing I, I, the I would, I would say of the thousands of votes that I've taken, because there was a polarizing uh, situation in front of us, and, this, and it was long dragged out, and in my opinion, Mayor Jujuga should have handled it right away. Instead, it went over and over and over again. We, one, the one issue that I had to remove myself, so over thousands of votes, I'd have to count up how many I couldn't vote just okay. in the last two years, in all honesty, okay. because for 10 years, I voted on thousands of things. And yes, in the last couple of years, I knew that the optics didn't look good, that I had to remove myself. But you want to know what? It's And Tom Duggan has been on. Jennifer Kinnan's getting up, and she's announcing her conflict like I should, right. but some mm -hmm. people don't. Do the right thing. That's all. Thank Absolutely. you. So one of the one of the other things that's been whispered, uh, Jen, and then yes. we want to do closing statements. Uh, one of the other things that's been, that's been uh, whispered and sound off and all this other backroom stuff that I hate because um, I think everything should be out in public um, is uh, is questioning your uh, education. Can you yes. just tell us what your education is, yes. where you graduated you. from? Yes. I just think it's important if it's going to be talked about behind the scenes, let's, let's just let's get it out. Let's talk about it. So I didn't get my diploma the, tr tr the traditional way. I ended up leaving high school in my senior year because I wasn't planning on going to college right away. I wanted to go out into the workforce. So I went to Northern Essex Community College and I got my general equivalency diploma. It's equivalent to a high school diploma. I went to work and raised my family in my 20s and 30s, and then I am a proud um, recent graduate of um, UMass Lowell with a bachelor's degree in business administration, which is probably the most updated degree out of anyone of us sitting here. So I will be, I'm a proud um, graduate and again in business, but I've been in business, uh, you know, my whole life. That is just an addition to all my knowledge and experience that I have done in business. So proud of it. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to give you guys uh, a couple of minutes. I'm not going to time it, but just be mindful of the time. Uh, Ed says we can go over a little bit, so uh, so it's not really that critical. Um, to give your closing statement, and this is this is really an opportunity because this might be the last time they, they hear from you before the September 17th uh, election. They may they may not you may not end up knocking on their door. This may be the last thing that they hear before they vote. So I want you to give people an understanding of who you are, why you're running, and what you will solve. How are you going to solve? the myriad of problems and controversies going on in Methuen. And do uh, you want to start? Because you haven't had a lot of time, so you can take yeah. as much time as you want. Don. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Good question. I would, what I've been saying right along is I need to sit down with people. I'm more of a problem solver. When the problem comes, I assess it and take the best course of action. So I need to sit down with everybody the counselors, the, the, all the department heads, 
the police, and I got to see it for myself. Once I do that, I'll make the best decision in the uh, for the citizens of the city. And uh, you know, I've been a businessman all this all this time. I've been dealing with problem customer problems for twenty five years. Me, the only one. I don't have a team of people. I go in there. I I fix their networks, whatever it takes. So I think I'm capable of doing the job, and that's all. All right, Neil? Uh, so I'm a 61-year-old resident of Methuen. I uh, brought my four kids up here, love this community. My 85-year-old mother still lives here. God bless her. Uh, my father was a police officer. He passed away 25 years ago, uh, so I have roots in the community. I... Um, Worked in the playgrounds as a college student, uh, was a bilingual teacher for three years. Um, I ran St. Teresa's Girl, I coached first, and then I ran St. Teresa's Girl softball, and I helped uh, with Steve Saber merge it into the Methuen Girls softball. We won't hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a 38-year executive at Raytheon, contracting professional, um, master's degree in business administration with a concentration in accounting. I've taught accounting at the... Uh, college level, both at NECO and at Southern New Hampshire University. Um, I have an experienced background dealing with people all over the world. I've led large work groups of hundreds of people and multi-millions of dollars with government contracting, right? Not, not, not um, you know, regular individual contracting. I've done foreign governments. I've done the U.S. government. I've done state. I've done uh, all kinds of contracting. And that professional experience, I think, is what I bring to the table. But more important than any of that is the fact that regardless of what people would say, I love the city of Methuen, right? This is my home, and I'm running because uh, we have a chance to bring transparency back to Methuen and represent the citizens and give them a voice in the government, and that's why I'm running. Jen? Thank you. And thank you for hosting the event. You're thank welcome. You Hopefully you guys will all come back after, whoever wins will come back after the primary. Your debate will be October 31st, October by the way. October 31st. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for watching. And honestly, I hope all your answers uh, to some of the questions that you may have were answered today. Honestly, um, again, I still think I'm the best qualified person to help run our government and get us back on track. I know the problems that we've had, and I have solutions for those problems. Feel free to go to my website at canan.com and see uh, some of the other uh, positions that I have in for our city to move us to a better place. Uh, I will talk a little bit about my family. My mother and father are still here. They live in Methuen. Uh, I have my husband's business here in Methuen, and my children are all here raising their families in Methuen. I invested in our community. Uh, I think we all love the city, uh, even people who've just recently moved here. Methuen is a great place to live, and we need to get back on track. Please look at my record. Do not believe all the innuendos that are out there. My track record is great, and again, if there are problems, and there will be, and there were some, then I am the person to help fix those problems. I don't run from them. I, I deal with them head on. I respectfully ask for your vote at the primary uh, on September 17th. Thank you. Dan Shabillier, will you get to wrap this up? So unlike many of these folks here, I, I didn't grow up in Methuen. My wife and I chose the city. We chose the city to put down roots. We chose the city to raise our children. Right now I have a one-year-old girl and a little boy who's going to be three in a few weeks. I'm vested in the city because my, it, my children's future depends on it. I want to see them thrive, and in order for them to thrive, the city around them needs to thrive. Frankly, I, I, don't, I don't want to be a politician. I'm, I'm a businessman by trade. I'm an attorney by education, and I, I want to take this city from the, the, the politicians that have been in City Hall for so long, and I want to bring common sense back to the conversation. I'm never going to sit in a room and tell everybody I'm the smartest person there, that I'm an expert on... Uh, low impact drainage, like the issue at the Sweetheart Inn. My job now, my job as an attorney and my job as mayor is to gather the experts to facilitate the conversation, to identify problems, identify solutions, and then implement, implement them. And that is what I do. I attack these problems and I solve problems. I understand what it's like to work in a bureaucracy because I do it every day. I think we need someone who can bring that education, who can bring the the, the eye to the future, someone who's not afraid to rock the boat because they're not worried about re-election. If I don't get re-elected in two years, it'll be because the people have decided not to. But I believe that if you give me the chance, 
you'll see that my actions will speak for themselves. You'll, ha- you'll feel comfortable, and you'll see a positive trend for Methuen. And for that reason, I'm asking for your vote on September 17th as we try to put Methuen first. Thank you. All right, thank you. Dan Shabelia, Jen Canan, Neil Perry, Don Riccio, thank you. I, listen, no matter what anybody thinks of these candidates, it, they stepped up to the plate and they put their name out there in a time when you have five people running for six spots on the school committee. You've got the East End two councilors are running completely unopposed. Um, it, it's great to have at least four people interested in replacing uh, Methuen Mayor, uh, the current Methuen Mayor. He's not running for re-election. I want to thank our sponsors. And, you know, we pay for the time here. And so having sponsors is important because that means it doesn't come out of my pocket. I don't have to eat macaroni and cheese this week for dinner. Royal Screen Printing in Methuen. They print all the Valley Patriot shirts. We're going to have them, some hats made up in a couple of weeks. Patriot Pest Management, uh, if, you, uh, if you're worried about the Triple E situation, they will come out, they do mosquito spraying, and they're a local company, and they're good, pe- good people to do business with. Rocky Morrison at the Clean River Project, Your CBD Store, 73 Main Street, and you can go to yourcbdma.com uh, if you want to look up some of their prices and their products. Butter Bings, the best hot wings in the Merrimack Valley. And what else did you say that they buffalo had? Buffalo chicken dip. Their buffalo chicken dip, Neil Perry <laughs> recommends very highly, so I want you to go and ask them for that. Tell them that you saw them on the, on the Paying Attention podcast. Zanny Pesci Law Office. If you have some legal issues, go see Zana P- Zanny Pesci Law Office. Lance Morass- Morassi, uh, the dog. We did cover the uh, the dog park thing. We have a commitment from all four of these guys to try and help get a dog park. A and M Auto Body. Our friend Angelo uh, will fix your car. I swear to God, my car. When you see it in the parking lot, go. You can't tell that both my doors were taken out. He did such an amazing job. AFC Urgent Care. They're always, always on board with us, no matter what we do. Uh, and Lisa Williams and her husband are fantastic people. They do a lot for the community. Neil Perry for mayor, also sponsored tonight. Thank you for that, Neil. And Martin Knows Towing, who's always there for us when we're raising money for scholarships. My name is Tom Duggan. This is the Paying Attention Podcast. Hiya Top Two Guys Smoke Shop here at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. I hope that you guys will, uh, those who move forward to November, your debate will be October 31st. It's the Thursday before the election, and uh, and we hope that you will participate. I think this has been very, very helpful to the voters. No matter who you vote for, please vote. And if you don't like any of them, go out and pull a ballot and leave it blank anyway, as Neil, Neil Perry said he should have done, uh, because I do that all the time. I go in, and if I don't like anybody, I still go down and I vote. I pull a ballot and I leave it blank. It's very important that you show these politicians where you really stand, what you really think. They all deserve a round of applause, as does Ed Sullivan, our our fine, fine producer. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you you to our studio audience. Please, please patronize our sponsors. Please patronize our sponsors. And uh, and we will see you in a couple of weeks with the uh, at-large debate after the primary. The at-large debate, I think, will be the first one. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And thanks to uh, Dave Garofalo. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.